We're in Microsoft Excel, and I wanted to show you how to create this basic Gantt chart. So I'll show you how to create the chart, but also I'll show you how to create the underlying calculations for the chart. Okay, let's see how this can be done. So we'll start off with this basic template, the information we need for our Gantt chart. You can download this from the description of this video. I've got some task names that are generic at the moment. You can change those to whatever you like. And we've got our start date for each of these tasks. Now I've got the working days that the task will take to complete. So working days, I'm assuming here, Monday to Friday. So we want to skip over weekends and we also want to skip over our list of holidays. So you can have as many holidays as you like in this holidays section of the sheet. I've only got two holiday dates. Now to work out the end date, we can use the workday function, which returns the serial number of a date before or after a specified number of workdays. So my start date would be in B2, comma, working days is in C2, comma, and my holidays are over here. N2 to N3, and I need to lock that with the F4 key on my keyboard. Close the bracket, press enter. Now, if this value here was one day, you'd see that a one day task starts on Monday the 4th of July and ends on Tuesday the 5th of July. Now, it depends how you want to see this, but for me, that's a two day duration. If you're happy with that, you can just leave the formula as it is, but I'm going to subtract one from that result. So a one day task will end on the same day that it starts. So I'll take that back up to a seven day task. And now I'm going to copy that down to get the end date for the other tasks. Right now I need to calculate the duration of the task. So what do I mean by duration? Well, that's the difference between the start date and the end date. So the working days may be seven days, but you may have weekends or holidays in that period between the start date and the end date, which would increase the overall duration of the task, the difference between when it starts and when it finishes. So to do that, I can take the end date, subtract it from the start date, and then I need to add one. You always add one when you're subtracting two dates if you want to include the start date and the end date in your calculation. That gives me a value of nine for that task. There's obviously a weekend in this period here, and you can see we've got the results for the other tasks as well. Percent complete, you can just type in your own values there. Now, work days complete, what do I mean by this? Well, what I'm saying is, is that I need to multiply the working days by this percentage complete value. So I take my working days value and multiply it by percent complete. Then I'm just gonna copy that down. Now work dates complete too. Here, I need to calculate seven days on, seven working days on from the start date of the task. So work day. Start date is start date of my task, comma, work days complete is seven, and my holidays are over here, which I need to fix. Now I do have the same problem though. If I change this to one, I'm getting Monday the 4th of July, but the 5th of July here. So I'll change that back to seven, but I am going to subtract one from that result. Copy it down. So if I've completed 100% of the task, I would have expected to have done all the work through to the end date of the task. So it's seven working days, but the overall duration of the task is nine. Now the values that we're gonna calculate in these two columns are going to appear in the chart itself. These are gonna be the bars. We're gonna have one color for completed and another color for remaining. Now the completed calculation is the number of days between the work days complete two and the, our start date. And we need to add one to include both dates. And that gives me a value of nine. So work days complete is seven, but including the weekends in this period, it gives me nine days complete. Now, if I copy that down, it gives me the days completed for the other tasks. This value here includes the non-working days. Now to calculate the remaining days left on the task, that would be the duration minus the days completed. So now we have all the workings. The next step is to create the chart itself. You start off by selecting 
everything in your start date column, including the column heading. Go to the insert tab on your ribbon, go over to the charts group, and then you've got your column and bar chart button. And we're going to go down to a stacked bar chart. And once you've done that on the chart design tab, go to select data and you're going to click on this add button under legend entries. If I move this out of the way, our first series name is the completed column heading and then series values for that. You need to delete what's currently in that box. Series values are all the values in the completed column. Click on OK. Now we've got to do the same for the remaining columns. So click on Add again, Series Name, Remaining, Series Values. Make sure you get rid of everything in that box are all the remaining values. Click on OK. Now whilst we're here, what we can do is add our horizontal category axis labels. So I've got the remaining series selected. I get Edit and I select these task names, click on OK, click on OK again, and we have something like the chart that we eventually want. These blue bars, we don't actually want to display on our chart. So if you click on one of the blue bars, you should select all of them, and we're gonna hide them. And the way to do that is to go to the Format tab on your ribbon, go to Shape Fill, choose No Fill, and that effectively hides that series. Now you end up with this huge gap in front of the bars that we can see, so we do need to change the minimum date value that is being shown on the horizontal axis. Now to do that, double click on the horizontal axis, and that should bring up the format axis task pane on the right of your screen. If not, right click format axis, Make sure you're on the Access Options button over here. And what we need to do is type in the first date that we want to use on the horizontal axis. So I'm going to say that's Monday the 4th of July. 4th the 7th, 2022. Press Enter. Now we can also decide on a better maximum date as well. I think I'm going to say that's the 31st of August. So in the maximum box, 31st of the 8th, 2022. Now, one thing you might notice about our tasks down the side here is that they're actually in reverse order. Now, if I click on that vertical axis there, over here on the right-hand side, you'll see an option, Categories in Reverse Order. So if I tick that, that'll reverse the order of the task names. Now, at this point, I'm just gonna increase the size of my Gantt chart. And across the top here at the moment, you can see that we've got a 10 day increments for our dates. I'm gonna want a seven day increment. So I'm gonna double click up here. I'm gonna to go to the Axis Options button. Axis Options there. And I'm gonna change my units to a major of seven units. So now I get the beginning of every week. So on our chart at the moment, the orange bars represent the portion of the task that is completed, the gray bar, the remaining work. Now we can change those colors. I click on, for example, the gray bars. So I only need to select one to select all of them. I can then go to the format tab on the ribbon and change the shape field to say blue. I can also add an outline to the bars. For example, if I select the first task there that's 100% complete, I'm gonna add a blue outline. And I'm also going to do the same for the blue bars. Now I want to make the bars slightly taller. If I double click on one of the bars, go to Axis Options over here on the Format Data Series, and I'm going to decrease the gap width. That'll make the bars slightly taller. Now the next thing I want to be able to do is to show the percentage complete value for each of these tasks. So the trick for that is to go to this Chart Elements button, the little plus button, top right of your chart, data labels, but then go to the sub menu and go to more options. Then you need to click on this label options button and untick value 
and choose value from sales. Now the values that we want to pick up are in the percent complete column. So I'm selecting down to F11, click on OK, and then we get the percent complete on each of these tasks. Now where you place these data labels is entirely up to you, but you can see you've got a label position section here. So center is the default, inside end, or inside base. I'm going to leave it as inside base. Okay, now we're going to add a title to our Gantt chart. So I go back to this chart elements button, tick chart title, and I'm just going to call this progress chart. And then I'm just going to make the chart slightly bigger. And there's a few things we can do to improve this aesthetically. What I'm going to do is click on the plot area and I'm going to shade the plot area with a light gray. Then I'm going to select the chart area and I'm going to have a slightly darker gray for that. And then I can do things like embolden the axis labels and I'm pretty much done. So obviously if I were to change the percent complete down here, say for task six, let's say that was 75% complete, that is automatically going to update my progress chart. Okay, that's all I wanted to cover in this particular video. Hopefully that's useful. If it is, please give me a thumbs up and subscribe, and I'll see you next video.